Hello and welcome to Mad Al Goes Racing, where today we are having a look at Race Room Racing Experience, or just Race Room for those who don't like to say all those words. Race Room is a free-to-play sim from Sector 3 Studios, previously known as Simbin, and originally released around about February 2013. So, what do you get for your complete lack of money? Well, you get 12 cars, that's uh, one hill climb car, which is the V8 Judd, the Aquilia CR1 Cup car, two P1 prototypes, two P2 prototypes, the GTR1 Celine S7, the Formula Junior, which is effectively a Formula Ford, and four Silhouette Series cars with various engine configurations. There are also five free track locations with 16 layouts, which comprise the Lakeview Hill Climb, which is 13 odd kilometres of Ribbon of Tarmac, Portimao in Portugal, Sapang in Malaysia, the Stowe Circuit, which is the little infield circuit at Silverstone, and the fictional Race Room Raceway. Additional content is available to purchase, but more on that later. 152 cars are available, uh, covering various series from DTM Old New, Ad the ADAC GT3 series, World Touring Car Championships, and the newer TCR series, GT4 through GT1, and various Formula cars, Group 4, Group 5, the list goes on. 39 tracks are available, with something like 82 layouts covering most of the globe, plenty of German tracks, several of the less well-known tracks in Sweden, for example, uh, Russia, all over the place. Quality-wise, cars are generally very nicely modelled, with a good level of quality throughout, although some of the earlier content is not quite as high quality in terms of polygon count, visible in the steering wheel, for example, and some of the textures are not as crisp. Similarly with the tracks, they lack a little of the atmosphere of some of the other sims, but are not so dead as to feel like there is no atmosphere at all. Quality-wise, there are still plenty... Uh, so let's try that again. Quality-wise, they are all pretty good, and again, the newer circuits appear to have more detail than some of the older locations. Sounds are good, although I personally find them slightly overdone at times, especially the reverb, although it can be turned down. And some cars do seem to have a shortfall in terms of things like tyre scrub, stones when going off track, and little additional details. And it is actually rather strange to go from one car that lacks all the little details to something like the Porsche GT3 Cup car, one of the newest cars, and hearing just how drastic the changes are. Sport is available for both flat screen and VR, and the VR is reasonably well done and allows menus to be used with a mouse, which is a little clunky but works okay. Don't expect to hit 90 FPS in VR, as due to using an older engine it isn't going to happen, unless you have a 10 GHz CPU. And the UI is really designed to be used with a mouse and keyboard, which is a little disappointing now, compared with some of the other VR titles, such as Dirt and project cars where you can use a controller for everything. Settings wise you'll find all the usual settings for sounds, in fact probably more than just about any other sim, gameplay options, video, setting up controllers. The HUD whilst racing has in the last year or so been updated to a new version which requires starting an external process to hook in and supply the HUD elements, which whilst an improvement in terms of the available widgets is a bit of a pain in the butt especially if you forget to start it. The new HUD is a major improvement, as now it's easier to move and resize the widgets as required. Game modes include practice, leaderboards, challenges, single events, championships, although it's actually a DIY job, so you have to create your own, and multiplayer. A single event allows you to choose uh, settings for practice, qualifying, straight or three or four round elimination, and one or two races with options for using qualifying or race one results to define the group for race two. Settings can be based on several real world series with DTM and ADAC series and possibly others, I can't remember. You can also set the number and class of car for the AI along with their strength or use the adaptive AI settings. Championship is basically the same as a single event, the only difference is that you can add multiple tracks to allow multiple rounds. Practice has all the same AI options and everything else. Uh, all have options for tyre wear and fuel use as well as setting time of day. And yes, that's day, not night. 
AI is very competent with the ability to set them up to be adaptive against your own driving. And whilst I have in the past tried to do this, it tends to be done on a per car and track basis. So frankly, I'm not 100% convinced of the benefits unless you plan to play exclusively against AI with a limited number of cars and tracks. MP is good, although like far too many sims, the complete lack of any type of simple way to set up a server is a major drop off. When you run an MP session, you'll have to jump through the appropriate hoops to set up a dedicated server of some sort. There is no simple project cars like P2P option, and all I can say to this is, come on, if you need a bloody tutorial to set up an MP session, it's too damn complicated. Physics are fine, uh, and there have been advances made with the newer cars, things like dirt build-up on the tyres for example, uh, but FFB can be a little bit of a mixed bag. Some cars feel fine, others just feel pretty dead, and, uh, like the M1 Pro car for example seems especially bad for some reason. Brake and throttle rumble on the Fanatec Club Sport V3 can be a major pain in the butt, at times it feels fine, and other times it just feels like they want to give you a total foot massage. Way overdone and no way to make any changes in game, or none that I've found. Just would like the rumble to tell me when the tyres are sliding, not that I'm on the brakes, which is a common issue with many driving games that use rumble for braking on controllers. And talking of controllers, yes there is a good support for the usual controller types and no need to worry about the number of controllers, at least for the amount I have. Usual selection of ABS TC stability control, with ABS and TC having a factory option for realistic controls. There is also a counter steer assist that will help catch slides, and it's definitely useful with a controller. I should mention H patterns are supported, and Race Room has the same type of system as some other sims in terms of what happens when you miss a gear. You have to go back to neutral and then attempt to re engage the gear, making sure to re engage the clutch, and I find that a pain in the butt. But my opinion seems to be against quite a few others, but there we go. Elephant in the room, uh, the fact that it's a free-to-play title. Well, it is free-to-play, but only if you don't want to really get the play. As I said, there is a lot of content, which if you get it all in one hit is not horrendously priced. And you can buy the what's known as the premium pack, which includes all content and has usually about a 90% discount which will set you back around about 90 quid. Or in other words, to buy everything, one car and paint job at a time, will set you back 800 quid. Can end up making race room a little expensive to get, and keep up with all the new content, which is regularly released. There is an option to try out content before buying, so there's no real excuse for buying anything you don't like. Again, if you buy it all in one hit, it's not going to be cheaper anyway so it's a bit of a trade-off between only buy the bits you want and pay more or buy everything and get the bits you want and whatever you don't want. Overall it's a really solid addition to anyone's stable of sim racing games and the question should you buy it? Well yes but you may want to try as much content as possible before plumping for putting down any cash. You may also want to restrict your content to something like the World Touring Car Championships and the subsequent TCR content, which is really well done and they do various packages that allow you to pick and choose certain series, track packs, so you can be a little bit more choosing what you buy. So, that's Race Room, worth a look, and until next time, enjoy your racing and I'll catch you soon. Goodbye.